Amen. Every time God sends his word, his word comes with power, his word comes with healing, deliverance, and hope. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about. Every once and again, um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons, but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing per time. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Praise the Lord. While I was just putting together this that the Lord uh, would have me share tonight um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important we are alive to it we understand it and then we pray there is a growing trend of frustration please listen very carefully of depression and exhaustion these three words the holy spirit used speaking to me frustration depression and exhaustion to be exhausted and the lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's word and God's purposes in their lives even for this season and so my my exhortation tonight as we pray is going to deal with two categories of people please listen number one those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season if you belong to this category i have a word for you tonight that there are people there are families there are individuals who it looks like they are in very very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual over that family and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory number two those who um are not necessarily attacked but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned it's important that we are used by god to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding it is important that believers mature into understanding times seasons and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times are we together now so we're going to deal with these two categories of people can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the lord for understanding father grant me understanding grant me understanding grant me understanding hallelujah amen please pay attention those following online pay attention if you know someone who belongs to these categories even if not you please pay attention for their sake hallelujah there are not many things that can discourage a christian please listen carefully um, but the few things that can discourage a christian when they are there and they remain, the effect of their presence can be disastrous. I have identified two major um, issues, if I would say, that discourage Christians. Number one 
is on answered prayer there's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves God as a tragedy of unanswered prayer that people lift up their voice to heaven believing that God is alive releasing all their faith as much as they know and then not getting the answer that should be number two is an unfruitful Christian life an unfruitful Christian life that means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service your work to for God it's very very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart serving the Lord giving his best and then with time cannot see um, the evidences there are evidences testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our life so unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life now write this down please there is a goal let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell there is a goal there is an object behind every attack of satan listen carefully that every time hell launches an attack on an individual on a ministry on a family on a couple there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts and the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack, the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he is attempting to attack your confidence in god and the integrity of his word what satan is really attacking is the integrity of god's word what satan is attacking is your confidence in god the bible says to cast not away your confidence why because it has a great recompense of reward are we together your confidence in God I don't know if I've shared it here but I remember I was in Joss for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look I've served this God I've preached about this God but I'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this let me tell you something life has a way of pushing a man a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another for John to be thinking of another as the person who ordained Jesus, he should tell you what situations and circumstances can do. Are we together? So your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. 
There is a reason why he says that. Fear is terrible. It's a destructive spirit. Every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door. No other spirit can open any door that fear does not open. Failure waits for fear to open the door. Death waits for fear to open the door. Discouragement waits for fear. All the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck. But then they wait for fear. A man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear, the fear of death now, have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. Fear. Believers live in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you, except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we allow Oh, this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged, students are discouraged, workers discouraged, graduates discouraged, pastors discouraged, church members. You know, it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression. When you say praise the Lord, people cannot say hallelujah. In their minds, they say for what? Hallelujah comes from the word halal Yeshua. Praise the one who saves. That's what it means. You say, where is the salvation that I should praise him? Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young and now I am old, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. 
He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, four years, no child, then she now gets pregnant and everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harbalist. But you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power. Going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation. Only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. When an aspect of your life has results. And then another aspect does not have results. You can at least find consolation. Listen. But when every area of your life lacks result, it's a cause for concern. Usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying, but why is this so? Hmm. An attack on your confidence in God. You started your Christian experience loving God. You made bold and audacious statements about God. And while you made that statement, hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you. I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens. I will stand for him. I will stand by him. It doesn't matter. And now five years without a child. And you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made ten years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150,000, you can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again. Until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you. Until you sit later on and say, but God, are you not watching? And then heaven is silent. Are we together? When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about. Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. Is your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself. Now imagine, please, ladies... Imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves. Not that they died. Not a car accident. Not sickness. You left your child hugging your child in the morning. And say make sure I see you in the evening. And then you see people running somewhere. And you join them thinking it's someone else's child. And there you see your child. And the testimony is that he killed himself. 
Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say, this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people, very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves. It's a spirit, but I've taught you how spirits work. They don't come and work with nothing. There is a raw material. They use your frustration as a raw material. They use your depression as a raw material. They create a, they, they create a system around your frustration. And that becomes the entry and the access point to your life. But we have come tonight to call the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, but I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here, Koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be. In the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep. They have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution. Shall famine. Shall A, B and C. Frustration. And then the spirit of fear. You look around and see fear all over people's eyes. Fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Fear of children. Fear of raising children. It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths. Especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards, and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne, and our, conviction, our convictions will not shake, we will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time. Say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. He holds tomorrow. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. Fear is a spirit and all spirits are received. Any spirit that is received can be rejected. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power and of a sound mind. Fear of excelling in ministry. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the future of children. Fear of finances. How can I tell if I will live to see tomorrow? How can I tell if I will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight? Mm. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear that is the believer that will weary satan to victory literally 
that you can weary the devil with your convictions that regardless of what happens around you you can stand in faith and say my confidence lord more than ever i trust you more than ever i love you more than ever i will follow you as for me and my house when a husband loses his job in one day by the next month the wife loses her job by the third month the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a bible in the midst of them full of many promises and then they do not know what to do let me tell you something my brothers and sisters at that time heaven is watching even as hell is also watching those who will not curse God because of their pain if your pain will make you curse God you are small if your pain makes you curse God you are weak if your pain makes you curse God your foundation is not deep enough are we together Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight. Only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that your father has died. Are we together now? There is a couple, I don't know if they were able to make it here, but I'll be very impressed if they made it. The devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven that the devil says can't you curse God are you blind you still maintain your integrity and say God is alive I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam apostle I've heard you change people's jam this is what I got this is what I want to get pray and they send sometimes more than 10 times that text I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by much you are a millionaire and by much you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just that we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. Four months they say we've tried. Don't come near us for that rent again. I confess to you, my brothers and my sisters, that life can be very trying. Life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say, being in the flesh, I thought it would be easier. But now I've carried the burden of men. And even as the son of God, I confessed that men are trying. 
surviving the betrayals and the pain surviving the nakedness and the shame now alone praying in gethsemane jesus wept prayed till his tears became like drops of blood is god blessing you today there is a reason behind the attack that has come is currently on you or is on the way coming let me tell you this <laughs> There are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan. And he will come. I assure you. Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you, but I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He is coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan just like faith cometh. Is it not in your Bible the thief cometh? He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family, he will come. To every ministry, he will come. To every life, please hear me, he will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of of love and passion and friendliness they had i could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce i said what, what was so bad that you want to go out man of god i've said my own we didn't come here to debate it's a conclusion we have made i said take it easy there has to be a way hmm. life bar if you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it? And add it to rice and turn it to eat and die. They are not stupid people. There is a way life can push you. Huh? As a lady, when a man has done your traditionals, has done everything, the invitation letter has come out, and then he just looks at you and casually says, I don't feel like doing it again. Because somebody told me you are a witch. Go and tell your father they can go with the dowry. I'm gone. At that point, you would think you would smile and say, oh, no problem. What is there? God told you to live my life. You, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to.
it is true that life can push you it is true that life can challenge you recently i had a conversation with a man that broke me i was going to pray for the man true story and the man looked at me and said apostle let me finish the story he said as i'm talking to you right now my beloved wife is in the mortuary i don't even have the money to go and bury her i'll not mention tribe but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy and the man was just smiling i said your wife is dead he said yes sir dead my wife i stood before everybody to exchange vows we agreed to grow old together now she's gone you think they didn't pray to raise that body back the guy i'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking christian what happens you see i've been to the mortuary many times my brothers and sisters as a man of god you can imagine what happens when people die i've been to the mortuary they have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary alone why because they believe i'm anointed and i believe i'm anointed and i stood before a dead body that would not listen to me wake up in the name of jesus and the body is looking there are times when life will act like that dead body There are times when your finances will act like that dead body. There are times when your marriage can act like that dead body. There are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens you must know what to do when the devil launches an attack do you know what to do or do you just know that attack is real hallelujah years ago i counseled one of our precious ladies she's no longer here and this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says i love you I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual, and that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen. If an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night? They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions. And I said what happened. And just some issue that he, he truly told me under God now it's not for me to vet the rightness but from as a man of god i can tell you i discern he was true some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it the case had been pending 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 and finally they just threw that man away out no job and the man was telling me say where do i start from there were monies they were supposed to give him nobody's talking about it and everything has gone I confess to you that life can be challenging. I confess to you that when Satan attacks you, he looks powerful because the attack is real. You will see it and sometimes you will wonder, Lord, where were you when this came? But tonight's message is for you.
Let's look at a few scriptures. Hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, 33. We are really going to pray tonight. And when it's time to pray, please hold, even if it's prophetically, the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message and lift them before God as we cry. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Everyone read with me. One to read. Jesus is speaking. Uh-huh. These things... I have spoken unto you. What things? That in me ye might find peace. Why? In the world ye shall have tribulation. Listen. Listen. Jesus is speaking to believers. And saying the possibility of tribulation. Is something that will be part of your experience. That means acclimatize your mind. Do not think it strange when these things happen. He says, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Listen to this message, matured believers. And run away from some of these childish things that continue... To give us very aberrated views of life. For our light affliction. Why will you use the word affliction for a Christian? One who is in Christ. One who has sustained victory. The fullness of the spirit. The fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him. Paul is speaking and says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, he says, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our light afflictions. So it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions. Nobody sits and prays for it. But that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference. Do not think it strange. Rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory. Are we together now? Yes. I will never forget years ago I was encouraging a gentleman. Generally just sharing with him. I told him I pray for you to get a job. But in case you don't get a job... I was sharing with him certain business ideas and the guy almost shouted on my face. I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement. I was saying that there will be delay in a job. You know, the Bible says he will not. I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God. I pray. I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying if this possibility happens while you wait for that blessing, be thinking of this and that. I don't mean to embarrass you, but till today, I'm not aware, except if he got it this year. But till today, he has not gotten a job. The same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. They are not the same. The same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant. And say, we do not, we, we are not discouraging you. But we are just saying that there might be these possibilities. And that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody's arguing it. Until life shows you pepper. And then you turn and say, ah, so this thing is like that. A man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space his car had gone in the afternoon broad daylight the car that was dedicated in church don't forget don't forget almost every church dedicates cars 
This car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. But I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother, it was in a, it was in a night vigil. They were praying, not in a party not in a club a night vigil they were praying lifting up the name of the lord fiery prayer suddenly a woman stops drops dead and dies that's how the mother died i remember when that lady called me that night crying and saying apostle how can my mother die in the place of prayer it's the same thing like saying how can jesus die but he died how can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. I like what this teaching is doing to you. You will thank me tomorrow. Add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days. For some of you, the dark cloud is already before you. And you will need to know this. James, let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this. There are things you need to know. Knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability. Knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith Walk at patience. Verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect walk. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect walk. That ye might be mature and complete. Wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly. That it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell and then also the bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in god's kingdom listen very carefully there is a place where the refiner's fire i preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction and several people said, don't mind that message. Just believe, you know, and so on and so forth. There is a real experience in a believer's making called 
the fullness of affliction. I repeat, there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire. It is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? He says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he say, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there, then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that train. Believers, we have been spoon-fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism, Ah, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings? They rise to a high altitude and right there by themselves they, they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold. And they stand there and then suddenly new feather begins to come out slowly. There are things that the tempo has been preset. It will not be accelerated because of your tears. It was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> hmm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire. You are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fine. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil, it comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. 
There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Naboth. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat. It is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me. There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road. No other believer can see and it can make sense. Now, God gives you a rule and says for the next five months, I meet with you from 11 to 3 every night, regardless of how tired you are. And some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree and the man is right. He is not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. far from you show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest Show us the ancient path that so many have left. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your Listen. The path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation. Except you are laughing by the anointing. He that sows in tears, a farmer laughing by the farm has not started farming. The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see and then you will know that nobody was dashed wealth you see young people with anointing all these young boys where did they get it from go and find out the pain find out what they were doing when you were sleeping find out the covenants that they that they tied themselves with like a rope all these people who have great ministry be careful oh you don't know where they are getting the crowds from you are joking you go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Huh. Making. Ask a coach how a champion is built. The coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached the elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that have been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can't, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further.
On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going and hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory are tears and blood, sleepless nights and sacrifices. As any great man. Champions, hear me. Being a champion is not just a confession. Ask a pregnant woman. When she gives birth to the baby, like our dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing. But ask her how it was. Right now you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep, but from you he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? He calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, it is God. I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you not during your training. You will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago. When out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us, that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works.
you have never been disappointed forget about carrying the power of God now it's not for children you must taste of this cup called shame you must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone and the life that I now live it is no longer about if you are not healed I'm not a man of God no your ego is gone it went with the training you started the ministry with ego so every time you want to pray for the sick your reputation is there and he said young man you can't do ministry that way it is not about the results it is about my glory it is painful to be approved of God this is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved you will be surprised what happens to you it's true you are a believer but you will know that everyone is not the same let no man trouble me he said for I bear in my body I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here you are in these defining moments and I must tell you what is happening in your life because if you are not careful you will run around and meet people and they will say no um, it's because you don't have faith no I show you the way of power let me tell you this listen listen I don't claim to know everything about the faith life I am just an effective member of the body but I tell you this when I teach people on how the anointing is made and I teach people how men are made it's an office I don't teach you cunningly devised fables I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time you ignore what I tell you is to your own peril that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled the keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed there is blood that must touch that altar and not some everything it must be drained till you are empty your tears will not stop him not even your fears you get to a point where all your fears happen to you and there's nothing else to fear you have come out of the realm not by escapism I'm afraid one of the ways boldness is given to you is what you fear is brought before you so that you no longer can fear God shows you your fear right before you you pray that he takes it away but you pass through it and there's no longer fear this is the making of men this is the threshing floor of Naboth this is how the great are made in this kingdom apostle I'm calling to the ministry of kingdom finance I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, take over, take over, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hey, take over.
Listen. Listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because it says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And you say, son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut. You are joking. Power to speak over nations? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Those keys are hidden in your scars. You keep them there. Oh, I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight. But this meeting is for the great. Because I see that season coming again. It's like a cycle. And a season comes when there is a new recruitment. A new recruitment. It's always like that. And then the ones that have been recruited, God starts working with them. After some years, he says, now there is a, an opening again. That can scare me, that can scare me, cause I know I'm dead already. In my reason, in my seasons, I cry out, this is the end of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah listen please listen to me not every negative thing happening to you is demonic is of the devil N not every negative thing will answer to prayer there are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life, I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. Please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young, it means that they were giving certain things as a dash. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There were nights when everyone would be sleeping. I would be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU. The roof of it in the night. From night till morning that roof seeing visions and revelations but staying there in that cold with mosquitoes just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain you are talking of giving some seed I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once once it was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one one or two two hours prayer <laughs> I will never forget times when I would lock myself 
for three days my eyes will not see the sun I don't know whether it's day or night I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night morning till night morning till night Lord expand this vessel expand this vessel let me be a, a conduit of your power that was a prayer not for myself Lord for your glory let it please you that I will be used as a vessel and one day God vowed a vow and said my son I give you my presence as a gift there is a threshing floor in the life of every believer please hear me I'm addressing those who are being attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand do not think that it is demonic please sit down and give me a few minutes and then we are going to pray tonight let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys it applies to everybody but please write this down I remember praying years ago and I said Lord why is it that when I speak nothing happens I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him not all they that believed in him if your ears could hear Peter the Holy Ghost will come to you I said Lord why don't I see this in my life not for pride and God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking but there are dimensions not all things are possible at every level there are real dimensions number one the first key that I will give you to minister comforts tonight overflow one I'm seeing lights all over overflow one this is what I'm seeing lights I'm seeing an impartation lights 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 just like like thunder like lightning light I believe it's an impartation just overflow one just caught my attention in the name of Jesus Christ that which God has in store let it come upon you in Jesus name number one the first key that you need to survive these seasons whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining number one never lose your joy please never lose your joy in this kingdom joy is strength never never lose your joy Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not always. Always as you go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I repeat. Rejoice. Joy. Joy is of the Holy Ghost though. Joy is not just clownish laughter. You don't have to laugh to be in joy. Lord, I don't know the name of what you are doing, but I rejoice. I rejoice, I rejoice, I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. Mm. True joy will come in form of a melody on your lips. A melody that does not make sense. Sometimes a melody that mocks your situation, still sing it. Joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. Popular scripture. But many of you don't know where it is in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
that the joy of the Lord, that means when you lack strength in this kingdom, what you lack is joy. In the physical world, when you lack energy, you are given food. Is that true? In the realm of the spirit, when you lack joy, I mean when you lack strength, what you are given to eat is joy. Sometimes God does not give you the solution. He gives you joy. 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 He said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. The shame, yes sir. The pain, yes sir. The no admission, yes sir. The disappointed meeting that I called people and I said, sick people, come. And at the end, nobody was healed. And that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said, next time, be a serious man of God before you call us. The Bible says, count it all joy. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. There's a joy in my heart In spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me And this joy that I have Only comes alive every time I hear your voice it comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million, and you stand and say, To God be the glory, great things He has done. Can you watch your job and you stand at the gate of your office? It was once yours, but now no longer yours. And say in it, oh God, I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse and you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life? And you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life. But now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money. Not lack of a child. Please listen to me. This gloominess we carry around is cheating us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Make up your mind to rejoice in the Lord. Why are you rejoicing and crying? I'm crying because of the reality of my pain. But I rejoice because joy brings harvest. You will sow in tears. But you will reap in joy. Not with joy. In joy. If there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen. The seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. 
let him pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call God names and say I will backslide let him pray Psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray Psalm 34 I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse. We are reading to four. To seven. They looked unto him. And were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Six. The poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer God grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if, you, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember i may be wrong i'm not saying you should do it please i'm not saying you should do it but as far as i'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. Imarama Imarama To the king who sits on the throne Imarama To the king Listen, let me tell you this I will continue to teach you this secret real victory real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise real men of power contact power when men sleep May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, 
grows of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages and they are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas kama hasabash. Rakata pakato sopakoto sheketele kata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Tasete shana haskabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. 
There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white hole. Through the king who sits upon the white hole. Shela bakata rekotosia imarama 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 to the king who sits on the throne imarama. To the king who sits on the throne. Eshena balara. Ele, 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 ele. Ela barata katos, abrande katela katos. Ekata prakatos, kale kata prasana kata. Karuse sene katos, alatos ke mahasa. War to them who are is in Zion. War to them who are is in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms. And say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. 
Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones, you are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14 Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said, prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy. Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord said prophesy there are times you need to prophesy there are times you need to speak psalms 138 and verse 8 very powerful scripture psalms 138 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly we're going to pray the lord will perfect that which concerned me thy mercy O lord endure it forever forsake not the works of my own hands you lift it in prayer i prophesy and i declare the lord is perfecting everything concerning me i declare that i come out victorious the bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me you don't just cry and say hey yeah so is this how my life is going to be this is what i've become now no sir nothing moves till you prophesy I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. 
you must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power the Lord is my light and salvation the Lord is my light and salvation I reject confusion in my life I hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk in it this is how to pray is someone ready to pray listen to me there are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning if you don't prophesy nothing will happen is someone ready to pray if you don't know what to say go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them lift your voice and begin to speak there has to be a scripture that you know it shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him from them all from them all from them all and I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the palmer worm the caterpillar it will give them beauty for ashes joy for the spirit of mourning that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy I am the head and not the tail above and not beneath I shall lay up gold as dust even the gold of offering Gentiles come to my light they are kings even to the brightness of my rising for my shame I receive double But my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in, blessed is the work of my hands, my kneading trough in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. pray pray you are not just speaking you are creating 
Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, above only in the name of Jesus, above only, above only, a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son, no sir. Open your mouth and cry. Change my name. Change my story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Jabez, the mother called him Jabez, named him in sorrow. But Jabez was angry. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Enlarge my coast. Is someone praying? Lord, change my financial name. Change my ministerial name. Change my marital name. Change my destiny name. Out of the abundance of your mercy. By the encounter I've had with you. Change my name. Change my story. Change my name. Give me a testimony. Shut the mouths of the wicked. Prove once again that you are God and that by yourself. Please pray. God answers prayers. Give me a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. The Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted Lord may I never depend on my strength it says trust in the Lord with all your heart Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways 
acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, Do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men, but my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Keep praying. We look to Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose. Until then it was night. The war happened in the night. The weeping happened in the night. But then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, the face of God. He says for I have seen God face to face. When Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my sun arise. Sun arise. Financial sun arise ministerial son arise the encounter is over the lessons have been learned the impartations have been received therefore night time be turned today night time be turned today Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. 
Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is a there is a an unusual degree of favor. Is God's signature? He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening i can tell you this happens it doesn't matter how the night is that when your day breaks you will see favor that will bring you to your knees when i talk of favor i'm not talking money i'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles money is very small God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained onto in the spirit covers that sphere elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land there were times when jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person what was the reward of the five two and one talent greater territory greater influence in the spirit when kings conquered certain lands they had increased territory america is called america today because it's the unity of many states one american state can be three times nigeria one state are we together now yes is why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. And there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other. There is no state that is more than one hour, 10 minutes. My Duguri to Lagos is the farthest distance. One hour, 10 minutes exactly, you are there. But you will fly for hours that is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again you say no problem he has upgraded the grace for i am also a man under authority right from where i am i can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit 
one of my old secondary school classmates my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army I think at the threshold of the next rank what's the next rank after, after major lieutenant colonel yes I think soon that's what they are going to give him he used to be a fearful chicken like young guy I remember when they take us from Joss to go to our school he would start crying even before we go out of Joss I never cried once to leave home it was a delight and a pleasure to get out that guy was so girlish and feminine I wondered but that guy today is a major Sometimes he would stand and do some things, you know, he could see a roach, cockroach, and you know how ladies would jump. But today he can tell me, kneel down, hands up, you civilian, except for the fact that when I sent the lackers down anything. Can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray God is hearing you. You're not wasting your time. It has been said no one rose beyond certain levels in your family. But can you pray the prayer of Jabez? Expand my territory, oh God. I will go where the fathers have not gone. I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. You don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life. This is not just a dealing with God. This one you know is demonic. It's like all hell breaking loose over you, over your family, over your spiritual life, over whatever it is, your business. I want to pray for you and I want you to believe. It is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power. Even when your seasons come to the end, there has to be a man. He said, destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I want to pray for such people. Suddenly your prayer life just went down. You come fast from 6 to 6. By 11 you are almost collapsing. You can't even breathe. It's an attack. As a man of God, you found out that it looks like you opened the Bible and your page is empty. You are not seeing anything again. Every verse looks confusing. 
every something is wrong strange attack on your church members are suddenly leaving everybody is suddenly hating you people you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you it's an attack you used to prophesy correctly but now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense everything you say is not correct word of knowledge not correct your prophecy not correct it's an attack it doesn't mean you are wrong it means the devil is attacking your credibility so that you will no longer be trusted finances you are a hard-working diligent person all of a sudden it looked like holes came in your pocket all doors just closed no destiny helper again even those who promise to help you it's as if something turned their backs against you it's an attack my brothers and my sisters you need to pray all of a sudden your children started becoming something else people you have labored and trained they now no longer listen to you you say a they say b you say keep quiet they tell you to keep quiet something is wrong strange devilish dreams nightmares you can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep here they come pressing you molesting you attacking you it will take the grace of god to struggle yourself to wake up it's an attack what of reports from home you are enjoying the glory of god just about to take a nice step they just call you they pay you some areas that you are trusting god to just use and buy a small land and you hear an attack that someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is and they need to spend 35 to 100 thousand every week and it is you they are depending on say devora say it again say devora i say devora because you don't do it everybody says you're a wicked young man who is allowing your father or mother to die and you pay 70 70 thousand in in five or six weeks your money is gone there are many ways believers can be attacked can i pray for you i don't know who is in that category but i believe the lord put this meeting tonight you don't have to kneel just believe believe Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe. Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, the thousands of people in this place, thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives I bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked businesses fiercely attacked destinies marriages spiritual lives ministries churches and by that attack your people have been discouraged they have been exhausted and frustrated tonight in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead we crush the works of darkness now yeah. pay attention I'm praying for you I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants 
activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives over churches over ministries over individuals mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names we command that spirit is banished from this territory the spirit of discouragement the spirit of exhaustion in the name of jesus we declare be gone now and forever He says, the Lord shall deliver you from six things, yea, seven things. And one of it is the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues. Pronouncements work, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you acted in a way and manner that out of anger, some men of God opened their mouths under the influence of the grace God gave them. And they made utterances concerning your destiny. Like Elisha, some of you laughed at certain men of God. And they made utterances. And there are things devouring you you cannot explain. Listen. There are some of you his parents. Maybe be, before you now started to be serious with God. You talk nonsense to parents. And they looked at you. And said may your children do the same thing for you you would think they were just joking the realm of the spirit is a legal realm believe it or not whether you believe it or not doesn't change that reality the scourging tongues like a scourge a scourge is a whip a cane that the, that the mouth of a man can become a whip over a man's destiny It takes people to speak also over your life. There are some of you, maybe you were in certain churches and you ran your mouth against men of God, laboring in the spirit, either because of their weaknesses, because of their mistakes. You opened your mouth. Some of you maybe even insulted them directly. And like Noah, they got up from their sleep and cursed you and said, a servant of servants shall you be. He said, God forbid it will not happen, but it's happening and you are seeing it. Yes, ago, I remember a man who I think he said something against Bishop Oyedeko. And Bishop Oyedeko cursed him. And he, you know, laughed it over and believed it will not happen. And for the next few years of that man's life, things went down until he went for prayer. And a true prophet of God said, ah, I'm trying to bless you. And I'm seeing that that blessing is not coming. Something you have offended a man of God. He said to go and if you can't apologize to him. You may not have time to do all of that. But that prayers need to be offered. Otherwise you will be surprised how long that thing will remain on your head. There are things in your life that should not go wrong. Something is making it go wrong. Exactly what the blessing does is what a cause does in the negative. Hallelujah. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's a revelation you must have. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. To me, no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming.
crying out to me. Is found in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. Powerful revelation in a world of wickedness, in a world of selfishness, in a world that is governed by interest. It is a revelation to know Jeremiah. What did I say? Chapter. Please search for me. I hope we got it right. I have loved thee. With an everlasting love. That's right. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. It's a revelation. After the grace, this my adorable children will be here lined up to give me a wonderful hug and how I've so missed them. And every time I hug every one of these children, I look at their eyes and I see the confidence they have in fatherhood. This is what the Bible is saying. I have loved thee. Do you know what it means to have an everlasting love? I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Ha! Huh. This is the God of heaven. Believers, hear me. You will draw strength for the journey, for your ministry, for your life, for your children. When you understand this, it is true. Would you dance with me, your lover, of my soul, to the song of all songs? Preacher, hear me. Businessman, hear me. Dance with me. Of my soul to the song of all songs. Powerful revelation. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine that eyes have not seen. Koinonia, hear me. God is comforting someone. Yes, have not heard. Neither has it been revealed to the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. There is a dealing with God that is in the realm of lovers. That God loves you so much he can sit down and think about you and plan something for your life that will make you a wonder and a shock. Please do not forget that when it comes to the sovereignty of God, God is not a man. It's a revelation I want you to hear. God is not limited by the limitations of men. Men are limited in knowledge. Men are limited in time. Men are limited in strength. But there is one who is called the monarch of the universe. And that when he decides to stand up and bless you and lift you, he will supply the strength and he will lift you the same way you press a button and a lift begins to rise. Is someone being edified tonight? The revelation of the love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says, For we know, we are privy to an information in the, in the kingdom. We know that all things, not some things, all things work together. Please hear me. You lost a loved one. I know it is painful, but hear me. You lost money. You lost business. Your expectations disappointed. Let me tell you, we know. They may not know, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God 
and to them who are the call everything in a man's life is navigated by the love of God to square up to purpose and destiny this is the wonder of the love of God hallelujah mm. Moses ran away from the Egyptians and he went to the backside of the mountain thinking he was running away from Egypt he did not know he was running to the place of encounter where he will meet the burning bush mm. very powerful it's amazing how God navigates men through the path of destiny it's amazing how many times you don't even know you are led yet you are led in the midst of your confusion the finger of the ancient of days is upon you in the midst of your cluelessness about life yet he is guiding you by his spirit and then when you see the wonder of his intelligence you will stand back and join people and say you are truly the monarch of the universe i have seen this with my life this is how koinonia started i have seen this at different seasons of my life let me tell you something do not stand the way of the wisdom of god over a man that he loves do not stand the way of the wisdom of god the intelligence of god is so thorough he ensures that you win the love of god everybody say the love of god let it be a revelation that is in your heart don't give room and allow the devil to take advantage of your life and spy upon your liberty no stand in the strength of the revelation of the love of god for we know look at this one day you will need this scripture sooner or later for we know man of god hear me for we know businessman father for we know apostle i lost my father and my mother this year i know it is painful it doesn't make sense but watch the intelligence of the one who designed the heavens and the earth listen anytime your life looks clueless tell yourself keep watching i've never had the opportunity to be okay well i had once i'm confessing now once in a drama group when i was in primary school so fortunate i acted a rich man i will never tell you the name i know how bad you people are you will not forget the name when i say it. they called me a wonderful name they gave me pieces of paper and leaves i was a politician in that drama i would spray money and people would clap for me and so on and so forth that was the only time i remember okay well and then a few other christmas dramas here and there but there's something i know about acting that there is someone called a movie director the movie director is the one invested with the intelligence of producing that movie sometimes the actors do not even understand the stretch they just know that in that movie you are acting you you die <laughs> in jesus name sam is refusing <laughs> you, you will not die in jesus name are we together now yes do you know what it means to be mindful of a man that means you sit down and invest your thought to understand this you must understand architecture while you are talking to an architect he's thinking okay so what do you want i want a house let me prophesy someone's house already i want oh, sit down sit down carnal people we are dealing with serious issues this night are we together and you are telling the architect okay i needed a duplex i need three parlors one for business one for family one for this i need a kitchen as large as a living room i need this and while you are describing it the architect watch this the architect is intelligently he's he's adding imagery to what you are saying and even things you want that you don't know by reason of his experience he now he's 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 filtering your amateur communication and he's adding his intelligence on it this is what this guy meant to say while you are talking your heart too is talking and he's listening to both of them and capturing them in the design of that house when he's done and he brings you and you stand you say if i were to draw it it would not look like this beauty glory elegance this is what the bible means that when god sits down in designing your destiny 
he designs it thoroughly with his intelligence he designs it in such a way that insists that you arrive have you seen architects design buildings and later on they find out that ah this soil the topography is not conducive and they say no problem they have to make adjustments but that building must come out i'm speaking to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god the blueprint and the design for your destiny it must be actualized in your lifetime in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down sit down every building does not look like it till it's finished every preacher does not look like it till god is done with him every worshiper does not look like it everybody say the love of god it's a powerful revelation that God loves me you know I have I think in the last I don't know how many years now it has become a deep revelation some sometimes I think in life eh, as you grow in ministry in leadership and in age certain truths of scripture begin to crystallize in you again are we getting blessed please settle with the love of God because there are some of you here look at me your fathers your mothers your loved ones and everybody has concluded about you and you may not know the effect of that thing in your life until you get to a point where you just say can anything good come out of Nazareth but the love of God oh the overwhelming never ending Reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me. Listen, listen to what you are singing. Oh, it chases me down. Fights till I'm found. Leaves the 99. That's strange. I couldn't earn it. And I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Look what God is doing in this ministry. Look what God is doing in our lives. I continue to watch people as they grow in the spirit. I continue to watch people transit like from egg, lava, pupa, adult. From a little shrub, God is making many of us to become giants. It does not look like it, but be patient with God and watch the wisdom, I say it again, of the ancient of days. It's a name he has to himself. The revelation of the love of God. Let's hurry up so that we can pray. Number two, the second way to be comforted, the second way to be strengthened as a believer is the comfort of scripture please write it down make sure you are writing number one is the revelation of the love of god how we are strengthened number two is the comfort of scripture romans chapter 15 and verse 4 romans 15 please and verse 4 look up please if you can and let's read together one two read for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning uh-huh that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope do you know what this means let me interpret this to you the meaning of this is that there is nothing new under the sun and that the bible has captured different experiences that can play in your life and has already given you a preview of how the end looks like so that by the comfort of scripture when for instance you are bereaved you may not know if tomorrow will ever come but you can open scripture and see someone who was bereaved and see how the person survived after it and you would draw strength from it it's not called scripture it's called the comfort of scripture joe was a man in the bible who is a classic example of a man going down to the lowest and rising back to the highest job in one day 
I'm not sure any man on earth has gone through that kind of experience. In one day, a man loses his daughters. In one day, a man loses his sons. In one day, a man loses his estates and his businesses. In one day, a man loses all of this. And then, before Job will finish coping with the sheer stress, his health is now affected. Boils begin to come. Dogs will come and lick the boils of Job. Many saw Job and said, oh dear, once great Job. And here he's sitting, only with the comfort of his wife. And watch this. God began to make a boast of Job in the heavenlies. And by the time we get to chapter 42, hallelujah, the Bible says, verse 10, that and God restored the fortunes of Job suddenly people began to come from everywhere and bring gift and the bible said all of them held a bag of money and gave him let me speak to someone the concept of things being over is not real did you hear what i said there is no such thing as it is over with god god can the worst thing that can happen is death resurrection is proof that god has conquered the power of death hallelujah Please find your dream alive. Find your anointing alive. Get back and open the books that you wrote visions. I will be a great worshiper. I will sing to the nations. Men may not invite me now, but in the name of Jesus, I find comfort in scripture that for a long time, David was in the wilderness, but a day came, he appeared before Saul. Your soul will call you for sure one day. So David, continue to learn how to play. They may not invite you, but stay until the season of appearing comes it is true apostle we've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb 10 years 15 years through the comfort of scripture god refers you to go to the patriarch father abraham and see what 25 years of endurance produced and when abraham finally held isaac they laughed and said all who here will laugh with me Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. taking the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my every Psalms 119 verse 28. Please sit down. Want us to pray tonight? Psalms 119 verse 28. Please make sure you are writing these scriptures. You can comfort someone with it after service. You can minister to your family member. You can go and fast with this scripture and pray. My soul melted for heaviness. It says strengthen thou me according to your word use your word to strengthen me i cannot pay the rent now but use your word to strengthen me use your word to strengthen me i don't know where the finances will come from use your word to strengthen me my mother has been diagnosed of an incurable disease use your word to strengthen me i just lost a job use your word to strengthen me i don't know how the future looks like the word is a strengthener it not only gives information we find hope in it 
Are we blessed? Yes. The comfort of scripture. Number three. The third way that we are strengthened in this kingdom is by a direct impartation and an infusion of strength from the Lord directly. God can stand up in his might and majesty and impart strength upon a man. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. He said, stand up. And he said, I have no strength. And his spirit entered and speak upon my feet and he stood. So God can directly impart and infuse strength. Second scripture, very quickly, let's hurry up. I want us to pray. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. So he's talking to believers. They who are of the fold. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Not in your bank account. No. Be strong. Not in your uncle or auntie. Be strong, not in your pastor or prophet or apostle or teacher. Be strong, not in your father or mother. Be strong, not in your certificate or your gift. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Amplify puts it in a very powerful way. If you can give it to us, if that is possible, let's just look at Amplify. He said, in conclusion... Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Draw strength. To draw from you again. Again. We've come to draw. Draw. Draw from you again, again. I've come to draw. I've come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Impartation, impartation, impartation. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We already read that scripture. It's very, very important. You can draw strength from him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Please, let's look at it very quickly. Paul was crying to the Lord and asking him for help. Paul was weary. And here was the response of the Lord. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you and here's the technology for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore i would rather glory in my infirmities paul is saying that the power of christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak mysteriously i am strong are we together god can impart strength upon you god can impart strength he can you can receive a surge of strength and may that happen to someone tonight that every door you have closed over your life and your destiny, you will go back and say, destiny, let's continue. From where we stopped four years ago. From where we stopped five years ago. Let me give us the last and then we'll pray. I want us to take some time to pray. How are believers strengthened in this kingdom? The fourth way is joy. The joy 
of the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 3. Neither be ye dismayed or sorry or in pity. It says, for the joy of the Lord is, not will be, not was, is present reality, your strength. Neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord. Don't pack up your life. Don't wrap up your ministry. Don't wrap up your business. Don't wrap up your endeavor for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I used to think he said always. But that's not what he said. All way, as you go, rejoice. All the way. Any road and any place you find yourself, let your disposition be that of joy. Rejoice in the Lord all way. And again I repeat, rejoice. Why? Because in this kingdom, you see, my brothers and my sisters, joy is like a fetcher. That is what you use to draw from the wells of salvation. When you lose joy, there are many things that will not come to your life. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. It says, they that sow in tears. It didn't say they will reap with joy. It said they will reap in joy. You will eat inside a kitchen. So if you are not in that kitchen, there's no meal. You will reap in joy. Psalm 67, we'll start from verse 1. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Say amen. amen. Verse 2. That thy way may be known in the earth, thy saving health among the nations. Next verse. Let the people praise thee. Oh God. God, let all the people praise thee. Yes, please. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Five. Let the people praise thee, O oh God. Let all the people praise thee. Uh-huh. Then shall the earth, the increase that has always been there but has refused to come out, that in praise and joy, the earth shall yield her increase and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Listen to me. You have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of remaining joyful. You have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of being unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. Joy all the way. Joy all the way. You stand before the coffin with tears coming out of your eyes, but you raise a song of praise and worship. You go to your ATM and check, and your balance is 1,500 naira. And it looks like you've not done anything with your life. You stand before your board and you see five carryovers. And it looks like there's no hope of moving forward. Please hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Let life always find you in joy. Joy is a choice. Joy is a choice. You can choose to walk in joy. It's a choice. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Choose to walk in joy. Let me tell you this. And this is something that gradually the continent of Africa and Nigeria is losing. Because we were one time purported to be the happiest people on earth. But right now, the spirit of depression is just coming around horizon. You see young people looking as if they are old joyless people people who look dried like a fig tree what happened why should i rejoice look at the way my life is no sir 
to him that is joined to the living there is hope there is reason to be joyful are you hearing what i'm saying the bible talks about people talks about all kinds of circumstances happening and people dry up because there is no joy in the midst of them when you are joyful joy brings songs of worship when you are joyful it brings expressions of strength of hope and of peace joy is so powerful that it was used as one of the indices that verify and attest to the presence of the kingdom that when the kingdom of God is in a place meaning when his will is being done it will be characterized by the tripartite realities of righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost a state of merriment a state of excitement that is based on a revelation listen to me the revelation is I will joy in the God of my salvation there is a Redeemer that is coming there is the lifter of men that is coming there is the anointer of men that is coming so although the fig tree may not blossom although there may not be olives on the vine although all of these things left and right may not seem to be manifest in the way you want you draw joy in the knowledge that there is a name that god is called the god of your salvation do you know what that means imagine a house burning and while you are looking at everything born you look at it and a time will come you will stop crying and you will start finding comfort the house was insured there is an insurance company that insured the house that means now that the house is born it is time for your insurance to speak for you you have an agreement with them that for as long as you continue to pay your premium that when a disaster strikes they will take responsibility it is a mandate they have placed upon themselves so while you are watching your house bond you are regretting what is being bond there you suddenly draw strength there is an insurance are you getting what i'm saying now that's what it means to rejoice in the god of your salvation the god of your salvation the word savior is the hebrew word jehoshua that's where you get the word joshua from the god that saves the one who saves are you getting what i'm teaching you tonight it's very very important so you stand and then you draw strength the insurance company is coming and when you call on the insurance company they come to stand and look at the building and value it and within months your building is back and not only back better what you wanted to put in before that you could not put now you have your chance you wanted to put two parlors before but the rigor of removing things now everything is burnt and now you have the opportunity to partition the house well and put the living room god is speaking to someone joy please be careful guard your joy the same way a wealthy person protects a rolex in a safe guard your joy the same way a lecturer protects his certificate guard your joy the same way money is guarded in a bulk room in a bank protect your joy by all means protect your joy by all means it is your strength in this kingdom it is your staying power it is the guarantee that you will finish strong are we together yes so number one to be strengthened the revelation of the love of god number two the comfort of scripture you see look up please look up if you are a believer <coughs> excuse me. if you are a believer and your word study life is not effective please obtain grace from god tonight to take your word study seriously 
because when life squeezes you it is it is written that will come out the word of god let it become your daily bread not one one verse per day no you should grow past that sit down with scripture study it it's like a deposit you are making the day you stand before goliath there is a scripture the day you stand before pharaoh there is a scripture the day you stand before saul there is a scripture the day satan himself comes to you there is a scripture the word of god and then number three the impartation direct impartation i believe that god will do this to our lives even as we pray a direct impartation of scripture and then number four joy koinonia access this mystery of joy like a river listen to me please listen to me life 24 hours already has by default programmed in it too many things to annoy you you will age yourself to death if you hand your life over to life to treat you you must define your possibilities the days that we live in now are days that joy must be a choice switch on your television and in five minutes you have had something that annoyed you you must choose to maintain your joy go to visit your child in school and you will see a teacher treating the child in a way you are waiting for your child to return with a wired result and you will see something that does not bring you encouragement hear me any other thing you base for your joy will disappoint you it must be the joy of the lord as your strength as god comforted someone tonight the joy of the lord choose to be happy you receive a call from home are you aware of the the kind of i mean there's no money anywhere we are going to die and you say mommy calm down why should i calm down because god is still the monarch of the universe there is always a way out two of you cannot be under pressure you choose to be under pressure or god under pressure he says the keeper of israel the keeper of the covenant not a person that means listen when cgc is locked the key is with someone if that person does not come we're in trouble so when we want to access a place the keeper of the key is important so when the bible said the keeper of israel you would think he's talking about the nation no israel means covenant there is the keeper of the covenant of my destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of your destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of koinonia there is the keeper of the covenant of the prophecy upon your life see let me tell you this look at me satan is a roaring lion if you allow his roar scare you you will never be able to defeat the lion and cut the head and move. No, 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 no. Life will stand and claim bold face for you. You must sustain the intelligence in the spirit to say with joy will I draw. They see you bending for a long time and wonder what you are doing. And all of a sudden you draw out prosperity, speed, increase, lifting, and while you draw it out people will just stand and say what is this the joy of the lord you're the god of awesome wonders i've tasted of your power Much more than I deserve. Help me. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. The wonders of your creation. Creation bound in honor of you as we joy to give. The song I love. The words you speak, come on. The words you speak, the things around your treasure have lifted me. You took away the chains and God that held me down. Oh, 
listen to me it is in your lifetime you will build that house if it's in your lifetime a day will come you will not think about money again it is in your lifetime the anointing you seek one day you will no longer seek it because it's with you listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is in your lifetime that you will smile again there is a name God is called the God of Jeshuron he is called the one that rides upon the wings of the wind let God be true and let every man let every report medical report let every system be a liar let God be true and let every ministry report be a liar let God be true and let every academic report be a liar let God be true and let every financial report be a liar let God be true and every career report be a liar listen to me please hear me many years ago I remember one day I was sitting down somewhere in the campus and I saw a plane pass and I was looking at it and the Lord told me that the word will take you into that plane many times I believed him The Lord spoke to me that a time will come, nations will come and will drink from that which he has put upon our lives. I believed him. Listen, you have gone too far with God to turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Husband and wife, remember Lot's wife. CEOs, businessmen, remember Lot's wife. Men and women of God, remember Lot's wife. That if you turn aside in the bay of battle your strength is small you must obtain grace to fight till you win you must obtain grace listen obtain grace to stand and face your fears fight and win oh they say you have cancer oh they say your genotype will never change that's nonsense obtain grace from god Oh, they say your children will never be responsible. Oh, they say your life is finished. See, let God be true. I'm teaching you how to win in life. You must immerse yourself. Because the kinds, the kinds of environment that Africa is brooding, the kinds of environment that Nigeria is brooding is pungent i say that respectfully is pungent for greatness from television to internet to everywhere there's all kinds of nonsense that jam packs your ear sometimes you need to say hey when the music fades and i simply come we must be that generation you can shut away from the noise Longing just to free something that's a word that will bless your heart. There are times you need to off the TV, shut the laptop. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is that what you have required? It is within his power to make great and live. You search much deeper within You looking into my heart You are worshipping the one who sees into the heart of men I'm coming back to the heart of worship It's all about It's all about you It's all about please listen to what you are saying it's, it's all, all about, about you it's all about you Jesus you are
are still going to sing this song and then we'll pray. It's nine. We'll pray for a few minutes. Listen. Listen. When you make it about your sickness, Benihin was, and, and you know, I, I follow him a lot, and Benihin was teaching in one of his healing sessions. And he said he found out that those who receive from God are people who learn to forget about themselves. The moment you are conscious about yourself, the mountains magnify. They looked unto him. There was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And they looked unto him. Barus Kaliata. And they were, their faces were lightened. Illumination. And God took shame and fear from their lives. Tonight we are going to sing that song again. Please take it higher for me. Listen. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves and remind our generation that it is all about Jesus. And I, the ministry is about Jesus. The business is about Jesus. Because sometimes you can be trying to make money and the devil looks at you and says you are a money monger. You need to remind yourself and remind Satan that this is all about Jesus. There are times, listen to me, that you will look at your children and sometimes you will put your ego on the line. And he reminds you that it's not about your children. It's about Jesus. There is peace and rest when everything becomes about him. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Listen. For Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus. Koinonia, hear me. When God chooses to lift you, it's a choice he made. When God chooses to honor you, it's a choice he made. God chose to speak to us that this year is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And you may say, Apostle, we are just in November. You know how long it takes for God to do something? As long as his will allows. If his will says now, that's how long it will take. You are willing and able. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Because you see, Satan is a seeker of attention. Satan is a seeker of time. He seeks time using all kinds of distractions in your life. And if you do not sustain the ability to set your eyes like a flint, you will never be able to raise your children. You will never be able to pay the bills. You will never... Listen, let me tell you, see, hear me. When God becomes the center of your focus, you keep looking at him and setting your gaze on him. And you will not know when you are rising, you will check and find out that you are not where you used to be again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please hold the hands of someone by your left and by your right. At the center of it all is you that I see. Is you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Ah. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning to pray at about 3 a.m. Now listen, we are going to pray. And when I woke up, I was just walking around. I was not even praying. 
and the next thing the Lord told me go on your knees I just rested on the chair and I was in the spirit and the strange thing was I saw the level of speed things were unfolding in people's lives just like a new season listen listen I want to hear what I'm telling you I saw people buying vehicles getting houses moving I mean listen listen I, I mean what I'm saying you know how how do I put it now um, there's this thing in a when you you have a, a any digital device and you are fast forwarding you can adjust the fast forwarding listen to me I was in the spirit when I saw this I was watching like a drama and then every time seasons are opening one of the ways there are many ways God shows me one either in a military military attire or number two the page of a book opening and suddenly I saw the page of a book opening immediately I saw this I came back and that's why the Lord told me to bring this message let me tell you my brothers and my sisters new seasons always don't look like it but for those who have strength lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. And the first prayer point tonight is you are going to judge God faithful. Take your eyes away from whatever has not happened or has happened and judge him faithful. Lift your voice and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. Both for the things you have done and the things that look like I'm not Faithful God. Is someone praying? We judge you faithful. Saints of God pray, mighty ones pray, those who have been favored by the ancient one pray. Faithful God, ah. hallelujah. Eh, eh, eh. hallelujah, you're the faithful God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. To be faithful means to possess the quality of consistency. To be faithful 
means to possess the quality of unbendableness. To be faithful means to possess the quality of integrity, predictability, sameness. And there is a name God is called faithful and true. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I judge you faithful. Shake it you are consistent. I trust your faithfulness. Please help those under the anointing. I judge you faithful. I judge you faithful. Consistent. Unchanging. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. We're praying. 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 we in take your focus. You're not a man, oh. You're not a man, oh. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. Number two, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. No system can say with power to say. I'm establishing the second prayer point. There is only one name. my salvation shift me to my destiny push me to prophecy lift your voice and pray let my life see your salvation break it 
The Bible says salvation belongs to the Lord. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to bless. It is within his power to lift. When God points at a man and says, this is my season to lift, there is nothing that can be done under the surface of the earth. Listen to me. Salvation does not just mean salvation from sin and Satan. It is the word soteria. It is also the word sozo. Are we together now? Soteria means to be grafted out into honor. It's a translation, a shift of realms, a shift of dimension, a shift of reality, a shift of results. Soteria. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. He says the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. It is within his power. Point number three atmosphere she now says be broken Ray. Holy Spirit Holy Spirit come now heaven open is open before me but many are the adversaries it is within your power to dislodge the spirits program to hunt destinies the stargazers over the destinies of men it is within your power lift your voice like a priest and pray tonight I command power I command devils spirits ordinances Pray for your business. Pray for your life. Pray for your home. Pray for your children. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your career. I command forces. I command spirits. I command protection. I command manipulative spirits. In the name of Jesus. Command by the power that created the heaven.
Koinonia, look at me. Satan will not fold his arms and let you raise godly children. Satan will not fold his arms and watch your ministry expand. Satan will not fold his arms and watch the wealth of the kingdom come upon you, knowing that you have the mindset that promotes Christ. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your marriage. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your family. You are going to decree. You are going to create. I like you to rebuke the devil. I command his powers. Give way. Give way. Give way. Give way by the spirit. Command every force that is not of the Christ over your prophecy, over your life, over your destiny. By the blood of the eternal covenant, by the name of Hallelujah. Now listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. One of the ways that we know God is through the dimensions that he has revealed. He is healer. He is lifter. He is restorer. He broke himself into these dimensions so that the day you need that dimension of him, you can provoke it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your Hewa hey, your Hewa hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. One more time. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name. what you are saying let the rain of restoration comes because you are the restorer let the, hold on let the rain of revival come let the rain of grace when you pray listen the bible says in isaiah chapter 15 i think and verse 32 or so until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then any man's desert can be turned for a fruitful vine. Any desert can be turned for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine be turned to a forest. But the secret is that shower. So when you say, Lord, don't just send help. Send your name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run and they are safe. The name of the Lord is security. The name of the Lord is defense. The name of the Lord is speed. The name of the Lord is restoration. The name of the Lord is deliverance. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name. You are going to mention every dimension of the name of God that you need in this season to push you into prophecy. If it's restoration, call it. If it's healing, call it. If it's a miracle worker, call it. Lift your voice and pray. 
Let him restore your joy. Let him restore your prosperity. Let him restore your peace. Though your beginning be small, Hallelujah. The names of God. He can be healer. He can be restorer. He can be deliverer. Whatever it is that you need is covered in his name. His covenant name. YHWH Yahweh is his personal name. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen. Please hear me. There is a name of God that can take you from where you are now to where prophecy demands you should be. You must find that name. Find it in prayer. For some of you, it is the lifter. For some of you, is the restorer. For some of you, is the deliverer. For some of you, is the mighty man in battle. For some of you, is Ebenezer. For some of you, is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. For some of you, it is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me add one more prayer. I apologize. Our time is gone. You're going to pray. Lord, let nothing in my life steal my joy. Listen to me. Hear me. Soon we're going to be wrapping up Koinonia now. And many of you will return home. Many of you are already, some of our people have left, gone for various reasons. Some are finishing their exams. They're going. And let me tell you something. The world that we live in today, unfortunately is saddled with all kinds of negative things from reports from family health reports reports of statistics reports of all kinds of findings and you are embedded in a system that is full of all of these things and most of them are complete nonsense as far as your destiny and god's program is concerned you will need to trust god for joy joy Guard joy jealously some of you have lost your joy you walk with gloominess as if life has pressed you down can I tell you something? Listen to me. The joy of the Lord is real strength. Once you sustain joy, you will watch your life continue to rise. The joy of the Lord is what guarantees harvest. The joy of the Lord is what guarantees finishing. I took this Bible and I found out that there was both Genesis and Revelation. And at the end of it, God is still seated on the throne on no account in this bible kings had to re, to relinquish their thrones in this bible queens had to relinquish their thrones in this bible nations had to relinquish their territory but from genesis to revelation there is an ancient one that remains seated as proof that he is the monarch of the universe are we together so my soul find rest in the fact that there is the name of God. Pray that last prayer and we'll wrap up this session. Lord joy, let there be joy overflowing right now.
No room for sadness. No. No room for joy. In the joy of the Lord. The joy that he joy. Joy that comes up from the kete. Joy that is a power. Lord, my Lord. The Lord. The joy. the joy Lord no matter what report I get from home your joy remains with me no matter what report I get in my office my joy remains with me no matter what results I see in my business in ministry joy Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the revelation of this teaching that I shared with you provide tremendous strength for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every lie of the devil over your destiny, every lie of Satan over your life, every lie of satan over your home over your family over your children over your finances over your spiritual life i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ that lie goes down and goes down forever i pray for you for those of you who have lost the strength and the fortitude to continue in ministry in life tonight like the dew of Hammon, I pray let fresh strength be infused upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for any and everyone here who is being resisted by Satan by causes by yokes by activities of divination and the plots of evil I declare by the God of heaven I command and establish your liberty this night in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that everything God has spoken in your life he will cause you to be so aligned that it must come to pass I pray finally for your family I pray for your children I pray for your job I pray for whatever it is you're doing let the anointing and the grace for extraordinary fruitfulness the grace that commands strange favor the grace that commands open door and influence and lifting may that grace rest upon you finally I pray for the eyes of your spirit I pray for your ears in the name that is above all names the clarity and the accuracy of perception as far as your purpose is concerned receive it now thank you Heavenly Father please everyone stand our time is gone I like to make an altar call right now many of you listen to this teaching and whilst I was teaching the Holy Ghost was speaking to you and there are many of you here who are saying apostle if you give me an opportunity i want to start afresh with jesus some of you are saying i've given my life to jesus christ but right now i need to rededicate my life sincerely your inside your outside jesus is called the prince of peace many of you online are following from whatever nation of the world i'm going to count one to five and i want you to boldly unashamedly to leave your seat and come stand here aside from overflow three for time's sake i will request that you just move to your projector stand let me call on overflow one and two and the main auditorium and any other overflow please just run be hasty and come and stand here while we clap for them in honor of what god is doing one keep coming don't sit back the lord is speaking to you i'd like you to run god bless you this is a place of love you are greatly loved greatly loved and greatly cherished his presence is where we find strength his presence is where we find life keep coming do not listen to the lie of satan there is always a way out the bible says there is hope for a tree even if it be cut down come
come to Jesus my dear ones run to him he is the way he is the truth he is life amen if you are coming from outside please come rush quickly God bless you God bless you hallelujah the Bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away hallelujah thank you so much for the bold step to come and truly surrender your life and your heart to jesus and some of you is a renewal and a rededication just lift your right hand believe that jesus is here i'd like you to set your gaze on him say after me everyone say lord jesus i love you and i believe mean what you say i believe that you are the son of God tonight I receive your life in exchange for mine I receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace and I declare that I reign in life I declare that the power of sin of Satan of the flesh is broken in my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen let me pray for you father I stretch my hands towards these precious ones you have declared that whoever comes to you you will in no wise cast away we honor you O oh God for drawing these ones this is what only Jesus can do and Father, I pray that the grace that keeps will keep them. That they will continue to grow from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your lives. May the lines fall for you in pleasant places. And may you have a goodly heritage. The Lord bless you. The Lord preserve you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for all of you, thank you very much. There is a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you, look at me. God bless you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people right away who will just talk with you and then you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Please let's celebrate them. Everyone, this way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.